everybody and welcome to our recording on the first Sunday after Trinity, the 19th of June, 2022. And I hope the weather is nice and sunny with you as it is with me as I record this service. And I begin as usual with the notices. Now you may have noticed that Ian and I are moving around a bit at the moment. The ministry area has a vacant parish which has services that need to be covered. This has given me a great opportunity to visit other churches and meet a lot of new people. If you're curious about how they do it in other places, come along and see. You will have a very warm welcome wherever you go and you never know, you might just bump into Ian or myself. We had a very successful messy church yesterday with a messy baptism included. It was enormous fun. Everyone enjoyed it and it was a very successful day. It is lovely to see families sitting together, doing activities, sharing food, talking about God. And next week, our Sunday services will be at Llanelid at nine o'clock, Cafe Church at St. David's Church Hall at 10.30. If you haven't tried Cafe Church before, come along and give it a go. It is usually very well attended. You will be able to have a chat with your bacon or sausage bap before the service. Do come along. And now we will have our readings. Listen to the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 8, starting at verse 26. Glory to God, our Saviour. They sailed to the region of Jerises, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a, a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but he had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me, for Jesus had commanded the impure spirits to come out of the man. Many times it has seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go out into the abyss. A large herd of pigs were feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank and into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and the countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demons possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told 
all over the town how much Jesus had done for him. Glory to God, our Saviour. Thank you for that, Bill. And now I'll give you my thoughts on that reading. And it is a bit of a scary reading. Here we have a man possessed with many demons. Reminds me a bit of horror movies. Don't know about you, but I don't watch them because I don't enjoy being scared. It's not the blood and the gore films that scare me. It's the film is about possession. So for me, this is a scary scenario. Of course, in modern times, 99% of cases of possession are put down to mental illness, and rightly so. There's still the odd inexplicable cases where psychiatrists can do nothing. But on the whole, cases of what would have been possession can be cured or at least controlled by drugs and therapy. So what is going on in this reading? Well, to be honest, we don't know whether the man was possessed or mentally ill. But in a way, it doesn't matter. Because what we do see is an exercise of Jesus' power. It doesn't matter whether Jesus was driving out many demons or healing a man with a mental illness. He was using his power to help someone, to show compassion to a suffering man. And there are a couple of interesting points here. One is that Jesus tells the man to go home and tell the people about what God has done for him. There are many instances in the Bible where Jesus tells people not to say anything about the miracles they have seen or received. But this particular miracle happened in an area where non-Jews or Gentiles were living. It's generally thought that by going into Gentile lands and performing miracles among them, and allowing the word to be spread among them, Jesus is saying that his salvation is not only for the Jews, but for everyone. And the really interesting point for today is that the people became afraid of Jesus or of his power, and they asked him to leave. It was probably not the healing of the man that scared them, but the fact that the pigs charged down the hill and into the lake. Think about it for a moment. One minute the pigs were contentedly snuffling about as pigs do, and the next they were charging to their death down, down a hill into the sea. It must have been a terrifying sight. No wonder the people were afraid and asked Jesus to leave. And of course, there is an economic consideration. Pigs represented a living to someone a way to feed a family and to keep from begging. So it is perhaps not surprising that they wanted Jesus to go away. And this made me wonder about people today. We know in this country, at least, church numbers are falling and people do not profess to be Christians anymore. And I wondered if this was because of the things they think they will have to give up. It is a big commitment to come to church on Sunday. It uses up a couple of hours every Sunday morning. And this was okay in years gone by when people didn't work on Sunday or when there was nothing else available to do. These days, there is so much competition from shopping, sporting activities and eating out that people don't feel they have the time to come to church. These days, people work such long hours that Sunday may well be the only day they have to spend together as a family. And we know that family time is important. They don't realise the difference that having a faith can bring to their lives. They don't think that there is anything in it for them. They don't see the strength that having a faith can bring, or the consolation, or the sheer joy of knowing that God loves us and that faith will bring everlasting life and the comfort that that knowledge brings. What they also don't see is the power of prayer. There are still demons in this world, and I don't mean demons that possess individuals, but those that are causing havoc in society. When you think about it, poverty is a demon. 
Even in our rich country, there are people who go to bed hungry. Coronavirus is a demon that killed millions and continues to kill. War is a demon that causes death and destruction in many parts of the world. The Ukraine is the war in the news at the moment, but there are other places like Syria and the Yemen which have dropped out of the news, but where war is still an everyday reality. Flood, famine and drought are demons that cause homelessness, starvation and death, and they occur in many parts of the world. As individuals, we can do little to help e these situations. We can give to a charity, we can write to our MP, we can buy a cup of coffee or a sandwich for a homeless person, or we can take a meal to an elderly neighbour. But we cannot do much to help the global situation. That is for the leaders of this world. But what we can do is pray. And we know that prayer can make a difference. I'm sure that each of you can think of an answered prayer or perhaps a so-called coincidence, better called a God incidence, where something has gone unexpectedly right after praying. And I'll tell you a true story about the power of prayer. When communism ruled the other side of the Iron Curtain, a small group of Christians who lived in Leipzig, just on the communist side of the Berlin Wall, began to meet to pray. The authorities didn't bother them because they were such a small group, only eight to ten. And they met once a week to pray for the wall to come down. But in the month preceding the fall of the wall, a prayer rally with only prayers and candles for protection gathered in the streets to protest. They began with 70,000 people. But four weeks later, on the day the wall came down, there were 300,000 people in that prayer rally. Remarkably, during that month, the army didn't fire on them. Many journalists and historians identify these prayer rallies as the catalyst for the action that brought down the Berlin Wall. So while the demons of today's world are powerful and seem too great for us to influence, remember the power of God and the power of prayer and keep praying. Amen. And now we come to our questions for this week. So question one, what do you think are the demons of modern society? Question two, do you have a favorite prayer that you pray often? Question three, do you pray regularly at home and not just in church? And question four, when you pray, do you remember to thank God for the blessings in your life? And on the subject of prayer, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you have given us, for all the joy and laughter that we have in our lives. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us fight the demons of this world. We as individuals can do little against global poverty, famine, war, disease. But you, Lord, can do what you want. You can change the minds of the leaders that they may govern with justice and mercy. And you can turn the tide of every bad thing that is happening in the world today. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And together we'll say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so we'll finish with our hymn for this week. We have a gospel to proclaim. Bye, everybody. Have a good rest of the day and a good week. And I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.